because I haven't really looked at statistics of my patient population. But typically, I would start the kids on zero, uh, on zero point five percent, and then dose it up or dose it down. I rarely use one percent. Um, I have. I rarely use zero point zero one percent, but I have. I like. Thank you. Uh, as uh, we all know, atropine is commercially available in Pakistan is 1% concentration. So how we got it was uh, we can get help from uh, a good pharmacist or uh, sometimes you can do it yourself. Just you can uh, dilute the uh, atropine with uh, artificial tears as uh, artificial tears, uh, uh, preserved artificial tears, any, any good uh, preservative. So you can dilute it to the required concentration of your choice. It can be 0.01 percent, or it can be 0.025 percent, or it can be 0.05 percent. What frequently use this Ah, it's uh, uh, we can use it overnightly once daily dosage. Thank you. Any more questions from? Thank you. My name is Saeed and uh, I am working in LRB uh, My question is from all the speakers. Uh, actually, uh, there were different moves to prevent or uh, lower the progression of myopia. So, I also submitted my abstract uh, on myopia control, which was behavioral aspects in school children. But as all the brilliant speakers are here, so I would like to know uh, if anyone has any, any interest in the uh, lowering myopia through behavioral aspects, like while doing my research in my final, final year, I came to know that there are many behavioral aspects, like uh, studies done in China, that the children of the richer persons will have a higher myopia, and same research are done in Singapore and different areas. So. What do you, any of the speaker, uh, tell us that is there any role of behavioral optometry here and how we can do uh, more uh, research on this topic? I think that there's a lot of room for doing a lot of research. Anything from from single interventions, such as using pharmacological only interventions, contact lenses, or cocaine. Certainly, atropine and orthocaine have uh, have the, the bigger percentage of information out there in in the prevention. Um, but but I think that that one of the starting points that we we should start looking at would be. Dosages and interventions, and in, in what I mean by that would be long term studies, four, five, six year studies, looking at the effect of uh, bifocal spectacles with atrophy, low dose atrophy, different type of concentration. I think that myopia management, and, and this is something that has been done, you know, the, some of the randomized uh, control trials. Have, have used multiple strategies. This is something that can be done. It's not costly. The interventions tend to be fairly straightforward uh, and the patient, patients will benefit. Um, that would be my, my, my take. Uh, I would like to add uh, four uh, more few lines. And uh, as you said, that uh, ch children from the uh, high-income families are in areas uh, they develop, uh, they progress more myopia, and they are where they, they, they are more likely to develop myopia. Uh, right. So mostly we know that it, it is associated with the increased visual uh, near visual world. So uh, the children from uh, well-developed families are well-earning families are from the higher class. 
are more likely to have uh, playing with the iPads of their parents and uh, mobile phones. And that can be the one reason that uh, those are have, uh, developing myopia and uh, myopia is more prevalent in uh, such areas. So, uh, I also, uh, all the times, I, whenever I see a myopic patient, and, uh, uh, when educating the patient, I used to tell them that uh, you have to reduce the uh, near visual near visual activities, particularly. So we cannot stop studying the books, uh, and we cannot stop uh, sending our children to, uh, from going to the school. But we can at least stop them from using the gadgets, and they can reduce their screen times. And uh, there are uh, there is an evidence that uh, the outdoor activities uh, are associated with the. Uh, reduce myopia progression and uh, lesser uh, prevalence of myopia. So you can educate your patients and certainly a lot of questions are to be answered and uh, which are to be answered by people like us and uh, by doing uh, research in that particular area. Thank you. Another comment that I'm going to make and thank you for because you reminded me of something. I, I, I failed first grade. I failed first grade not because because I couldn't hear, because I couldn't hear very well, I couldn't see. So the teacher said, you know, the kid is stupid, you know, there's no way he's going to amount to anything. We have to fail him. So I felt first grade, my mother then took me for a hearing test, I could hear, and it was the audiologist who told her, go, go see an optometrist to get some, to see if he needs some glasses. To your point, I think that Educating the population is critical. I think that carrying the message of preventative vision care is critical. That helps us identify students who are going to be myopic at an earlier stage and we can, inter we can place interventions at an earlier stage. Um, so public outreach by you guys because you can do your public outreach in your office, but community public outreach, where we try to identify these kids and they try to, uh, to have early inter interventions, uh, is critical. And that's one reason to be part of an organized group. Uh, I am uh, Yamuna Tarek from Multicase Low Vision Specialist at uh, Hyderabad Medical Complex. Uh, my question for all the presenters is that uh, what can we do if a child has already developed a high myopia and it is still progressing? What treatment modalities we can use and what will be the best option for that? My second question is that what treatment modality we can use in pathological myopia? Thank you. Professor. Uh, thank you As I said that, uh, we can't treat these people, we can't treat these children because it is progressive. It, it, it will keep on progressing till the age and it is pathological as we know that there are degenerative changes and these people usually fall in the low vision category. And in low vision category, you can do better with their layer, you can improve their vision, you can improve their fields and plus plus and plus, yet you can use, you can increase that they can be more effective with using their vision, which is the near vision. And in management option, we can have uh, optical, as we all know, that can be contact lenses or glasses, and by surgical option, they can later be have clear lens extraction and photorefractive surgery to some extent. And you can do genetic counseling of these parents that because it runs in the families, we can have lesser cousin marriages. So as an optometrist, you can also guide them. Plus you can do fundus examination to find out all these pathologies and then refer them to a VR surgeon or some ophthalmologist so that they can do the barrage laser, they can do the macular hole surgery and all that. So you can play your part as well. I have another question. Uh, we are treating myopia and we are using a clean and very nose doses. 